Today in this video we will be fine tuning world one of the most powerful large language models out there and if you don't believe me just go to a NLP competition in Kaggle and search for the keyword world and you will understand what i was saying in today's large language model era you should know how to fine tune them because training a NLP model from scratch is a huge pain in the head also fine tuning large language models like world does not require massive amounts of data because these models already have state of the art performance in many NLP tasks so they require very little amount of training so without wasting any more time let's get started we will be fine tuning world for a text classification task where we have to classify tweets into six different categories based on the emotions expressed in the tweets like joy fear love and anger for that the first thing we need to do is load world this is where the transformers library by hugging face comes in handy we will import the tf auto model class from the transformers library using the tf auto model class we can load any pre-trained model that is available in hugging face by its name using the from pre-trained function to load the bolt model we simply type in bolt base uncaged so what is this base and uncaged the bolt is available in two sizes the bolt base and the bolt large the bolt base consists of 12 transformer encoders stacked on top of each other while the bolt large has 24 encoder layers that's 2x the amount of bolt base in our example we are using the bolt base as it is sufficient for most tasks the uncased refers to the fact that this model does not distinguish between uppercase and lowercase letters in the text. It treats all of them in the same way. So let's run this cell. This will download the model from the internet for the first time you run it, so you have to wait for a while. The bolt has been successfully loaded. However, we can't feed it raw text as it is. We first need to tokenize it. To do this, we will also import the auto tokenizer from the transformers library. Once we have the tokenizer, we can load it just like we did with the model. Now we have the tokenizer, we can use it to tokenize any text. All we need to do is pass the text as an argument to the tokenizer. For example, I will give it the text hello world and store the output in the variable inputs. This is because the output of the tokenizer will be used as the input for bolt. Let's go ahead and run the cell. As you can see, these are the tokens. The number 101 and 102 represent special tokens start and end. The numbers in the middle represent the tokens for the words hello and world. But you will also see some additional parameters here, token type IDs and attention mask. The attention mask is currently set to all ones because there are no padding tokens present. But if you give the tokenizer multiple sentences, which can be done by using a list, the chances are high that the sentences will be of varying lengths. To fix this, you can add the parameter padding equals true to the tokenizer. This will add padding tokens in the form of zeros to make all the list the same length. You can also see that the attention mask now has some zeros at the exact same position as the padding tokens. This is because these padding tokens do not carry any meaning. So the attention mask is multiplied with the attention weights to ignore all the padding tokens. Before we can use these tokens with Bolt, there are two more parameters we need to add to the tokenizer. The first is truncation equals true, which will truncate any text that has more than 512 words, which is the maximum context size of Bolt. The second parameter is return tensors is equal to tf, which will convert the output from a normal python list to a tensorflow tensor. Now that we have properly tokenized our text, we are ready to feed these tokens to Bolt. We can do this by calling the model and passing in the inputs. Let's go ahead and run the cell. As you can see, the output of Bolt includes two tensors, last hidden state and polar output. If you don't know, the encoder in the transformer is responsible for understanding text. When text is fed to the encoder, it outputs a fixed length vector also known as contextualized representation or encoder representation because this vector contains the entire summary of every word in the input sequence. And as Bolt is pre-trained on massive amounts of data, these encoder representation generated by Bolt are of very high quality. They already have a good understanding of the relationship between words and the context of the sentence. This is what makes Bolt so easy to fine tune. And if you now look at the full form of Bolt which is bidirectional encoder representations from transformers, I hope you will understand this instantly. The encoder representation from transformers refers to the encoder representation we just discussed and the bidirectional part refers to the fact that the attention mechanism in the encoder can look at both the past and the future of any selected word, allowing it to better understand the context of the text. 
द लास्ट हिडन स्टेट टेंसर इज नथिंग बट आर एनकोडर रिप्रेजेंटेशन द टू इज द फर्स्ट एक्सेस रिप्रेजेंट द टू इनपुट सेंटेंसेस द सेकेंड एक्सेस रिप्रेजेंट द सिक्स टोकन इन द इनपुट टेक्सट एंड द लास्ट एक्सेस रिप्रेजेंट द हिडन साइज ऑफ द वर्ल्ड बेस मॉडल विच इज सेवन सिक्सटी एट फॉर द बर्ड लार्ज मॉडल इट इज हंड्रेड एंड ट्वेंटी फोर The hidden size is the total number of neurons or units in the feed forward network of your transformer encoder. But what is this polar output? As you can see the large hidden state generates hidden states for every word in the input text. However for task like text classification we don't need a hidden state for every word. We just want a single hidden state for each sentence. That's where the polar output comes in. It does not have the middle axis like the last hidden state and instead it has a 768 dimensional vector for each of the two sentences but exactly how this polar output is generated is beyond the scope of this video now we have everything the model the tokenizer only thing remaining to load is the dataset which we can do by importing the load dataset function from the hugging face datasets library Now we will call the load dataset function and pass in the name of your dataset we want to use. In our case, it's the emotions dataset. Running this cell will download the dataset. Let's take a look at the dataset now. It has train, test, and validation split. The train set has sixteen thousand samples, and the test and validation sets have two thousand samples each. The first task we need to do is to tokenize the text in the dataset as it's currently in string format. The tokenization is exactly as we did before so I will just speed run this. As you can see I have mapped the tokenize function which is tokenizing the text to our dataset. This will apply tokenize function to every sample of every split in the dataset and I have stored the output in a new variable emotions encoded. And if you look at this new dataset now you can see that we have input IDs, token type IDs and the attention mask which are the inputs for bolt. Now we are almost ready to start training. But before that we need to convert this dataset from the hugging face format to the tensorflow datasets format. I have converted the dataset to the tensorflow datasets format but I won't be going through each line of code in detail as that's not the focus of this video but you can see the output here these are all the inputs for bolt and these are the output levels with this we are now ready to start building our model to create our model we will be using the subclassing api in keras this api allow us to create models by using classes we just need to inherit the tf.keras.model class in the init function i will accept the bolt model and the number of classes as the input then i will call the super.init function which will call the init function of the parent class to initialize the model next i will store the bolt model in the self.bolt attribute then using the num classes variable i will create a dense layer with num classes units as our dataset has six classes the dense layer will also have six neurons or units and i will set the activation function to softmax because this is the last layer and we want a probability distribution of which class is predicted by our model Now we will write the forward pass in the call method. The call method will accept inputs as the only parameter which in our case is the tokenized text and related parameters. Then we will pass this inputs to the bolt model and as we discussed previously the bolt outputs two things the last hidden state and the polar output. For text classification we need the polar output so I will just slice this and get the polar output. Then we will pass this output of bolt to the last dense layer and then we will return the output from this dense layer. and well done this was the entire model now we will create an instance of our bird for classification model by passing in the pre trained bird model and setting the number of classes to 6 this will create an instance of our model next we will compile the model we will set the optimizer to adam and set the learning rate to train rate to minus 5 This is very important. Whenever you are fine tuning any model, set the learning rate to a very low value. If you set it too high, it will rapidly change the weights making the model to overfit and all its learned weights will be lost. Then there will be no point of fine tuning. Therefore it's always best to start with a low learning rate when fine tuning. Next we will set the loss function to sparse categorical cross entropy and the matrix to accuracy. Now we are all set to start the training. So let's call the fit function and pass in the train data set and set the number of epochs to 3 and run. The training will take anywhere from 5 to 15 minutes depending on where you are training. So let's wait for a while. So the training has ended and our accuracy on the train set is a staggering 93%. But never trust training accuracy. 
So let's evaluate our model on the test dataset. We can see that we have about 92% accuracy on the test dataset which is very close to our training accuracy so there is no overfitting. So by fine tuning Bolt, we have just achieved a 92% accuracy by just training it for 3 epochs. You can also use Bolt for tasks beyond text classification such as question answering, named entity recognition or machine translation and literally your imagination is the limit. So that's it for this video and I will see you back with an even more exciting video.